diversify, decide, and deliver. These three words were the hallmark for my life thus far. Why is that? I essentially created three life hacks that I wanted to share with you today. And you might be asking yourself, why should I be talking about my life hacks? And why would I be a credible resource? One, I worked a very long tenured corporate career for 23 years at multinational companies that were global billion dollar businesses. Two, I'm Canadian, so I'm a trusted advisor and a credible resource. Three, I did go to credible schools. I attended Harvard Business School and I do research for Harvard Business School as well. Four, I actually work in AI and data science research for global, national, multi-million dollar companies. And then five, I actually run an AI data science company as well. So now that we got that out of the way, my life hacks. Life hack number one, diversify everything in your connections and make one new contact a day. So why do I say this? I realized at a really young age as I was working through college that I had not planned enough for what was going to be my next stage. So I actually had this crippling fear when I finished college because I had been working 20 to 30 hours in a week on retail and waitressing in addition to doing all my schoolwork and I hadn't prepared for a job. I knew that my connections were important, but it wasn't until this epiphany hit that I saw the true extent at what it could do for your life. So there I was, jobless, not sure where I was gonna move after I was leaving college, and scouring my network for anything or any lead that would find me a job. One of my friend's boyfriends at the time, Matt, had proposed an idea. He had actually worked a job the previous summer he said that it was pretty good hours, really good pay, I'd have transportation, and I'd be working on his team. So this sounded like a gold mine for a college graduate. So I didn't even hesitate to say yes. Well, let me tell you about my first day on my job. I had pulled into this 1,000 square foot warehouse at approximately 4.45 a.m. in the morning in Toronto, and it was a distribution center. And this distribution center was covered from floor to ceiling with potato chips. So yes, in effect, I was going to be a chip pusher. Not only was I a chip pusher, but I had a truck to push these chips around. So every morning I would go to a distribution center and I would load onto my 14 foot truck that had chips on the side, a picture of chips on the side, and I would put 100 to 150 cases of chips onto this truck. And then I would drive out in that truck in what we called small format convenience stores all over the greater Toronto area. And I would deliver to each of these stores 10 to 12 cases of chips, which in effect meant I had 10 stops that I had, would have to do a day. Now remember, I'm a female who just graduated college in her early 20s. I'm in a 98% male facility, and I'm also selling to 98% males. So this was a very interesting experience for me overall. But again, I would never have had this experience if my friend Matt didn't suggest it to, to, suggest it to me. So where do I go from there? Well, let me tell you about the anecdotal stories that happened in that job. I went to a 7-Eleven to deliver chips, obviously. There was a crane in the parking lot. Somehow the crane got stuck into the side of my truck. I had to go back to the distribution center and I told them that the crane got the munchies and went in for the chips. Not only did that happen, but I also ran a red light accidentally and no one got hurt. But what did happen was I had grown the strength to realize that I could do things far beyond what I thought I could do through my network. So what does this all mean with your connections? Well, look around to the people that are sitting beside you and the people beside them, and even the person beside them. And remember that it's not your inner circle that's gonna get you your next job or solve your biggest problems. Most of the time, it's gonna be that person who's an outer connection. And so go out of your way to make new connections a day. 
For introverts, I have a tip, get a dog. My pup, Winston, is a mini long-haired dachshund, and he has doubled my network. Not only has he doubled my network, but I now realize the importance of true value in friendships that you anecdotally get when you're at a dog park. And I now also looked at the facts for it, and actually you're at one in four people you meet, you're more likely to make a deep bond and connection with someone with a dog because you're talking about personal things and relating on a personal basis than any other connection on a daily basis. Life hack number two. I talked about really deciding. Deciding on what? I decided to really focus on career capital. And what is career capital? Career capital are the things that you work on throughout your entire life to build your entire toolkit, right from your professional to your personal acumen, right from your skills to your capabilities, from your transferable skill to your specialist skills. And I didn't realize how important this toolkit of skills was gonna be until I reached a pinnacle point. And before I get to that pinnacle point, I'll tell you a few elements that built in there. The first thing was, I was a very young child when I lost my mom to an illness. So I was approximately two to three years old. And at that time, I didn't realize that what I was losing was someone who was going to be the gatekeeper to a lot of decisions that were going to be made in my life, but that I would be building on career capabilities on my own. And that meant that I had to use different ways of doing that. So first of all, I was a techie and a gamer when I was younger. I played Castle Wolfenstein and Load Runner. I logged onto a network called the NABU network every day to be able to get on on you know, certain days to play these games and to do things. And I learned about technology. And in our living room, because my dad was in tech, we had soldering irons and motherboards and chips. And I would sit there and I'd watch him doing things and I would learn from him and I would build science fair projects based on that. And I soon became somebody who was known as the teacher's pet. And the teacher's pet, you might think of it as a bad term, or you may think of it as a good term, but at this point, because I didn't have the foundation of that mother figure, I looked for alternative ways of building out the things that I wanted to do at a very early age. And that was around academics and building my skill sets. So these career capabilities started within the school context. I then went on to do research when I went into college. At the time, it was RAT research on cognitive psychology. Right now, I wouldn't say that I would be doing that because I also am a vegan. Um, however, that built my skill set on how to write journals. It built my skill set on how to do case studies and put them together for Harvard Business School. It built my skill set for what was going to be the next big phase of my life. And I talked earlier about a pinnacle. And this pinnacle of, my, of this point, anyways, was the green card. And if anyone knows what it's like to apply for a visa or an application where you're waiting on someone else to make a decision, it's a very, very tough situation to be in. What I didn't realize is all the things that I had been doing throughout my life were building up to this meeting. So when I had to build out my own company and tell myself I wanted to become an entrepreneur after a 23-year corporate career, I had to file for a green card. And within the context of a green card, Fortunately enough, I had built up enough credibility to have a specialized visa, which meant that I was an expert in a field built off of the work that I had done previously, the research, the case studies, um, case competitions. So when I went into that meeting, and I remember it being a cool day in New York City, and I had shown up in a little blazer and a skirt and I was clenching onto the three copies of my green card application, which were hundreds of papers that I had printed out because I thought for sure they would want them. And I walked into that office and I sat down in that chair and they called my name out and I went into the interview room. There was a sense of relief that rushed over me when I realized that this woman who was talking with me was engaging with me like a friend. And that's because she had read my green card application and already gave me the career capacity and capabilities to say that I belonged here. And for me, I look back at building that career capital and say to myself, wherever you can put the effort into doing work that isn't necessarily work that you would do on a normal day-to-day -day basis, whether it's pro bono, 
it's research, it's internships that are with startup companies, or even with your friends where you're researching and getting into an area that you might not have. I think of it of your long-term career success because in your 40s and your 50s is when you reach your pinnacle. So imagine in your 20s and your 30s, you're still building your capabilities and your skill set. And within that context, you should always be thinking about what are the one to five career paths I want and what are the similarities across those and what do I need to do to build that career capital? Finally, life hack number three, deliver. And what do I mean by deliver? Well, this is all about advisors, coaches, mentors. I would think that I could get here and then I would get a coach and I would go here. And then I would think I could go here and I would get another mentor and I would go here. And so and a coach is somebody who hovers between an advisor, a trusted advisor, and a therapist. However, these individuals can bring you to the next level and push you beyond what you thought you could do. I remember running in track and I was one of the slowest people. I would never have said I would be a fast runner and I would never have said in my life that I would actually be a marathon runner or actually do competitions until I met Coach Kent. Coach Kent taught me how to run a race, how to get on a track and train for speed and endurance and resilience and I taught myself that I could fortunately beat a two hour time slot and achieve an hour and 42 minute half marathon pace without even denying myself that ability. And what do I mean by that? When you think you can get somewhere, your coach can take you to the next level. One of my favorite coaches is my dad. I talk to him every day. Our conversations are like this. Hey dad, what are you doing? Good morning because I call him at 6 a.m. His response is always like, Cheryl Bake, because that's my nickname, what are you doing today? And he would spend the time figuring out what am I gonna do and be productive to actually achieve the goals and the needs that I need to do each and every day. Now talk about an incredible other coach and mentors, your friends and your family can be your biggest supporters and your cheerleaders. And I think of it as informal coaches and then formal coaches. And getting a professional paid coach, somebody that can actually help you from either a, a tools and capabilities standpoint or potentially tell you things that you didn't know about yourself. And I use the tool called a Jahari window. And a Jahari window fortunately points out your blind spots. And it says to you, it is known to others, but it is unknown to yourself. And I currently work with the coach, Jen, on a platform and this platform helps me to engage on a regular basis with her. And this allows me to be go way beyond my capabilities. So in summary, when I think about my life hacks and the things that I did to achieve the hallmark place that I am today, diversify, decide, and deliver are three important words for me each and every day. And I hope that today you will take something on, a bigger challenge, a bigger help for someone else, potentially even get a dog, and that you will leave a little bit stronger and able to persevere, persevere during adversity. Thank you.